Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a dupes video and it's been a while since I've done one of these and I've had this idea kind of kicking around for a while and that is to dupe my most expensive makeup. So I went through my entire collection, I found the most expensive products in every category and then I went through my collection and tried to find a match for each one. So it was kind of like a little bit of a challenge. I would love to see other people here on YouTube do this video as well. So if you have a favorite person that you watch here on YouTube and you'd love to see them do this video Definitely go ahead and tag them down below. Also, if you're new here. Hi, welcome. My name is Jen I do a lot of videos like this dupes and drugstore makeup in particular So if that's something that interests you, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button before you go So let's go ahead and jump right in and we'll start out I guess with primer This is actually one you guys have seen me talk about before but the most expensive primer in my collection would have to be the YSL Touche Eclat Primer. This one retails for $52, so definitely not cheap. But the reason I've loved this primer for so many years is because it's not like your typical silicone pore filling primer. It actually has an oil base, so it has many different oils in it that just really help foundation to sit very smoothly on dry skin. So I use this a lot in the winter time, especially. If you've ever heard that little tip that people give sometimes to mix a few drops of oil in with your foundation just to make it lay really smoothly. This basically does the same thing. I just put this down beforehand and then any foundation I put on top of it just kind of melts into my skin very seamlessly and it looks flawless. It doesn't look cakey. So a really great dupe for this is the Joa Glow Activator Radiance Primer. You can get this at CVS also on Joa's website. It's $12 and it's almost completely identical. So even down to the packaging, they both come in heavy glass bottles. The product inside has a gel-like consistency with tiny little gold flecks. So both of them have those. The good thing is they don't actually show up on your skin. There's not that many of them, so you're not gonna get like a weird glitter effect. So you don't have to worry about that. But the Joa one is also made with oils as well. You have macadamia seed oil, apple seed oil, and olive fruit oil plus jojoba. So I kind of feel like it's not an accident. I wanna say that Joa probably was trying to dupe this when they made it. I'm not 100% sure, obviously. I wasn't there, but just between the oil base and then on top of that you have the little gold flecks in it I don't know these are just so incredibly similar I cannot tell the difference when they're on my skin next up when it comes to foundation the most expensive one by far in my collection is this Tom Ford traceless foundation stick this retails for $89 which is so crazy but I purchased it during I think it was a Sephora VIB sale or something so I didn't pay 89 for it but I saw the good reviews and I wanted to try a more luxury product and see what all the hype was about and it is a really nice foundation stick. Most of the time foundation sticks look terrible on me. They just look very heavy and makeup-y and they tend to sit on top rather than kind of sinking into my skin. So they just usually don't look the best. But this one actually is very smooth. It's hydrating so it never looks dry on me. It doesn't like accentuate my pores. So I really do like this. But the first few times I used it I quickly realized it reminded me so much of another one in my collection. And I think I've mentioned this too too on my channel. This is the Wet n Wild stick foundation, the photo focus one. And this feels almost identical, looks almost identical. It sits so similarly on your skin. You honestly cannot tell the difference. The Wet n Wild one is only $6. You get a little bit less product in the Wet n Wild. The Tom Ford is 0.5 ounces while the Wet n Wild is 0.42. But I mean, we're talking about a difference of $89 to $6. So it really doesn't matter. I could buy so many of these for the price of this. So the Wet n Wild one, like I said, it just performs the same as the Tom Ford. It doesn't have that really heavy cakey look when you blend it into your skin it just kind of disappears it goes on very seamlessly it doesn't look cakey it doesn't cling to dry patches like a lot of foundation sticks do on me so this is the most flattering I would say on my drier more mature skin when it comes to foundation sticks and it's so similar to this one I will never buy this one again unless of course they discontinue this and then I'll be in trouble moving on to concealer the most expensive concealer in my collection is this Dior forever skin correct concealer 
concealer. This retails for $36 and I have mine in the shade 1N. And the reason that I love this concealer is because it's very high coverage, but at the same time, it's not drying like Shape Tape was on me. I don't often reach for high coverage concealers, but at the same time, if I do need to, I want something that's gonna look really seamless on my under eyes, that's not gonna sink into fine lines or accentuate the texture and look really dry. And this one doesn't do that. It covers everything I needed to cover and it just looks really seamless. And I feel like a really great dupe for this is the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. So I have mine in the shade Fair Beige and this only costs $6. So compared to 36, I mean, you're saving $30 just by getting the e.l.f. one. And I find that they have a very, very similar finish. The e.l.f. also has a very high coverage, but at the same time, looks very hydrating underneath your eyes. It, it doesn't sink into my fine lines or crease and it just looks the same under my eyes as the Dior one does. So I feel like this is a really great dupe for this one. Next up, let's move on to bronzer and by far the most expensive one in my collection is the Gucci bronzer. I have mine in the shade Fair. I got this very recently, you guys might remember, and this was a splurge for me, but at the same time, I had heard so many people rave about this color being perfect for fair skin with a pink undertone because it does have a bit of pink in it. And that is so difficult to find in a bronzer. Most of them are more warm and orangey or yellow based. So finding a pink tone bronzer is not easy and that's why I was willing to pay $62 for this one. But right around the same time, I decided to try the Laura Geller Baked Bronze and Brighten in the shade Fair. And these two are so similar and I will have a drugstore dupe for you as well. This is just one of the two dupes that I have. So the Laura Geller one, isn't super cheap either. It retails for $34, but it's still a lot better than 62. And this one has that same exact pink undertone. This one's a baked marbled formula, so I also really love how it goes on my skin. I just feel like baked formulas look so smooth on drier skin types, or if you have more mature skin, I find that the baked formulas just kind of glide across your skin. They don't settle into fine lines and they don't look heavy. So I do think the Laura Geller bronzer is a great alternative to the Gucci one, both in the shade Fair, but if you don't wanna spend the money on the Laura Geller one either, I definitely have to mention the Flower Beauty Heat Wave Bronzer. This one's also a baked formula, just like the Laura Geller. I have mine in the shade Sunrise. They have two different ones. This is the lighter one, and this is also more on the cooler tone side. So before I got the Laura Geller and the Gucci one just like a month or so ago, I was using this one pretty much exclusively all the time, almost every day. And I've had this one for, I would say almost two years now, and I still have not hit pan on it. It lasts such a long time. And that's the great thing about baked formulas. So this one is only $9 and I find the formula to be almost identical to the Laura Geller. I would say the only downside to this one is that it doesn't have quite as much pink in it as the Laura Geller and the Gucci do, but it is more on the cool tone side. It doesn't have that orangey or yellowy tone. So I still feel like it's really great for fair skin tones and that's the reason I've loved it for all this time. So this is another really good one to check out at an affordable price. Next up, when it comes to blush, I decided to break it up into two categories. So I have my most expensive cream blush and then also powder. So for the cream, my most expensive one is definitely the Hourglass Vanish Blush Stick. These are $46, but I have to say the formula is fantastic. If you've ever tried their Vanish Foundation Stick or the highlighter, they're just so like lightweight. They feel like nothing going on your skin. They dry to a powder immediately, so they're very easy to just blend and they just glide across your cheeks. They're really seamless and they don't lift up your foundation underneath, which is definitely a must for me. They also don't have that sticky feel. Your hair is not gonna like stick to them when you turn your head or anything. So I think these are a beautiful blush. And to be honest with you, I had a lot of trouble finding a dupe for this in my collection, just because there aren't that many blush sticks at the drugstore to begin with. And some of the ones I have, like the ColourPop blush sticks or the Flower Beauty Gel Crush ones, they're just not the same type of formula they're a little bit more dewy and sticky and so I was like well, what am I gonna do and then I thought of something as I was looking in a bin of products that I've tried recently I just kind of glanced down and I was like oh my god that's perfect so this is a little bit unorthodox it's not technically a blush but it's the Milani color fetish matte lipsticks so 
I tried these out very recently and I was a little bit disappointed after seeing all the hype on TikTok of just how dry these look on my lips. They look so crusty. They make my lips look like they have a million lines in them way more than normal. So I really was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with these. And then that's when it hit me. I was like, I can use this as a cream blush. And they have almost an identical formula to the Hourglass ones. It's amazing. When you put this on your cheeks, it just dries right down to a powdery finish. I'm just going to put a little bit more on and I'll show you. This is the shade Tease. So I just put a little like this and just blend it with my fingers. But you can also use a brush if you want to. You can use a sponge. And unlike a lot of lipsticks that are more emollient, this one doesn't feel sticky on your cheeks in the slightest bit. It just blends right out to a powder. And I actually tried this out yesterday just to make sure it was a dupe for the Hourglass in terms of longevity, and it totally is. This lasted the entire day on me, no problem. I felt like this one even lasted longer than the Hourglass one did. It looked a little bit brighter and more vibrant on my cheeks by the end of the night. So it's honestly such a good dupe. It's the perfect dupe, and this color is also a perfect color match for this one which is loyal so I'm just gonna put some on the other side quick so that my face doesn't look lopsided now but even just like blending these two out it feels exactly the same so yeah I'm just using this little Gucci mirror so I have no idea if this looks okay but the color is almost the same, the process is the same, so let me just show you guys some swatches. I do have another color as well that I wanted to share. So you have Tease and Loyal, which you just saw me demonstrate, and then you also have the Milani lipstick in Pleasure and the Hourglass blush stick in Devoted, and these two are also very similar in tone. So with the Milani lipstick being only $9, I feel like this is such a great dupe. So anyway, for powder blush now, the most expensive one I have in my collection is this Cheek to Chic blush from Charlotte Tilbury. This retails for $40, which is really, really steep for a powder blush. So this is the one that has the little highlighter in the middle. So when you swirl your brush around it, you are gonna pick up some of that highlighter. It's not crazy intense, it's just a little bit. It's nice and subtle, but you do have a glow to your cheeks when you use this one. And as I was swatching all of my drugstore blushes, I definitely tried to focus in on ones that had a little bit of a sheen to them as well. And the one that I found is the Milani Baked Blush in the shade Berry Amore. So this one is so close to the Pillow Talk shade from Charlotte Tilbury. So like I said, the Charlotte Tilbury retails for $40. The Milani is only 10, so it's a quarter of the price. And I feel like the baked formula in the Milani is gonna last you such a long time. It might even last longer than the Charlotte Tilbury, even though that one is a little bit bigger. Just because it's the nature of baked blushes, you only need the teeniest little bit. And I feel like the Milani has that perfect level of glow where it's not super sparkly or shimmery. It just gives you that subtle sheen like the Charlotte Tilbury. Now I will say, some of these Milani baked blushes are very sparkly. It's just that this particular color happens not to be that much. So there are a few that are like this and then there's other ones that are more glittery. So that's actually one of the reasons why this is one of my favorite shades in the Milani because I don't have that glitter everywhere and it just gives your cheeks that really nice glow and a little bit of color as well. Okay, so let's move on to eyeshadow palettes. So I was thinking initially that my most expensive was Pat McGrath. Then I remembered this one from Natasha Denona. This is the Star Palette, and this retails for $169, which is so crazy. I actually got this with a gift card during a sale, so I definitely did not pay that much for it, but I just loved the colors in here. I thought it was so beautiful, especially because over on this side, you have like a nine pan that almost reminds me of the Natasha Denona Gold Palette. It's really similar with the golds and brown and then that teal in the middle. And then over on this side, you have some pink and gray. It's a little bit more cool toned. I think this goes without saying for most of you, but I always get a comment saying that the dupes are not dupes for Natasha Denona because you can't dupe her formula. And I agree, I mean, her formula is super, super pigmented. The dupes that I'm gonna share are probably not at that level of pigmentation, but at the same time, they are very similar in terms of the colors. And I find that if you really just love this color story, you can use any of the dupes that I'm gonna share and create the same looks with it. Even if you have to build them up or use primer or do whatever you have to do. Today, I am actually wearing the dupe on this side and the star palette on this side 
and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference at all. So the dupe that I'm wearing on my eyes today is the ColourPop It's a Mood palette. So when I looked at this next to the Star palette, I just saw so many shades that jumped out at me as being similar. So I definitely wanted to swatch them side by side and I was really shocked at how close they are. I mean, I do think that the teal shade in the Natasha Denona one isn't the same as It's a Mood. That one is definitely a little bit more blue in the ColourPop and there are a few differences but at the same time, there is a ton of similarity as well. And I think you really could create a lot of the same looks with this, especially once these shadows go on your eyes, it's hard to tell the difference sometimes. The next dupe that I found was the Lorac Fairy Tale Forest palette. This one I also thought was just so close. Looking at them side by side, I saw the same warm golds and you had that teal green color and then also some of the pinks in it as well. So I decided to swatch them side by side. And this one too really blew me away in terms of how close it was, especially the shades more towards the right hand side of the screen. I felt like there were a lot of spot on matches and then other ones that weren't exactly the same. But again, once you put them on your eyes, I feel like you could create some really similar looks with it. So the Lorac palette was a few dollars more than the ColourPop at $39. And then the last dupe that I have is actually a drugstore dupe, but it's $35 because it's like a huge palette. So this is the NYX Ultimate Utopia palette. And this one just has so many shades going on. It even has more than the Star palette, but I just saw the same vibe jumping out at me again, those golds and the teal green, and then some of the rosy shades. And just like with the other ones, there are some really similar shades and then others that aren't exact. But if you have the NYX palette, I feel like you could definitely dupe the vibes of the Star palette as well. All right, so also in the eye category, we have liners. So again, I broke this out into liquid liners and then pencil liners. So for liquid liners, the most expensive one that I have is the Huda Beauty Life Liner Quick and Easy. This retails for $19. And what I love about this one is that it has that really nice brush tip that's super, super thin. So for my hooded eyes, this works perfectly because I can get right up to the lash line and I find that the brush tip just gives me a lot of extra control. So I always look for that when it comes to a liquid liner. And the dupe that I have is the LA Girl Jet Setter Liquid Eyeliner. So this retails for $7, so it's definitely a lot cheaper. And I find that it has the exact same brush tip as the Huda. It's just as easy to work with. And I also love that this one is really jet black. It doesn't skip along my lash line. I feel like it's even more jet black than the Huda one, actually. And it also lasts just as long on my eyes as the Huda does as well. So I feel like this is such a great great liquid liner. If you're looking for one that has a brush tip that lasts a really long time, definitely check this one out. And then when it comes to pencil eyeliners, the most expensive one that I have is the Urban Decay 24-7 glide on eye pencil. So these retail for $22. And I know I've definitely mentioned this before, but the Koki Velvet Smooth Eyeliners, these are also waterproof, are like an exact, exact dupe for these Urban Decay ones. And they're only $6. Plus I have a coupon code at Koki to save 25%. So they're even less than that. And these are such an incredible formula. I'll show you guys side by side just how easy the Koki one is to draw. You hardly have to put any pressure down, just like with the Urban Decay. I feel like it glides across your waterline really easily. It's just so, so pigmented and at the same time, completely waterproof. So it does last the entire day on me. Sometimes I feel like it might even last longer than the Urban Decay one. It's just a phenomenal eyeliner. I've gone through so many of these over the years. And I've also talked about this one in so many videos. Koki sent me a box recently in the mail with like six of these in it, just because they were like, oh, you're gonna need backups, which I thought was so funny. And I definitely appreciated it because like I said, I go through these like crazy. Next up, when it comes to mascaras, the most expensive one that I currently have in my collection is this Bite Beauty Upswing Mascara. So this retails for $28, definitely not inexpensive, but I do like this one because it gives a ton of volume. It really makes my lashes just look really full and voluminous, and it also lasts all day without smudging. So love this stuff. It is a bit pricey though. So my favorite dupe is the e.l.f. Big Mood. I feel like these look so similar. They both have kind of the metallic tube that's a little bit more chunky, and then inside they have a bigger, fluffy fluffier brush that are, it's pretty much exactly the same. And I find that the e.l.f. Big Mood Mascara, which is only $7 by the way, 
just gives me the same results as the Bite Beauty one. I, I really can't tell the difference between my lashes when I'm using these. I actually did a video on e.l.f. dupes. I want to say it was like back in the fall, maybe in October, and I showed a before and after of my lashes, like one with the Bite Beauty and one with the e.l.f., and literally they looked exactly the same. So the e.l.f. is definitely a very solid dupe for the upswing from Bite. Then when it comes to brows, the most expensive brow pencil that I have is from House Labs. This is their precision brow pencil. It's called the Edge, and I have mine in the shade Ash Brown. So this is just like your typical skinny, like micro brow pencil. I think it's a really nice formula, but I definitely do have others in my collection. I have one from Jason Wu at Target that reminds me a lot of this one, but the cheapest one I have that's almost identical is from e.l.f. This is their ultra precise brow pencil. And I don't know off the top of my head what color this is because I think the color was on the cap for the spoolie, which I've lost, but I'll put it down in the description box below and I'll put it on the screen as well. And just like the House Labs one, I feel like this is so easy to draw on. It's not waxy. It's not too firm or too soft. It's like that perfect in between. And I love this color as well because it's a cooler tone shade, which is just perfect for my brows. So while I do like the House Labs one at $20, it doesn't make sense for me to repurchase it because I have the exact same thing. Whoa, <laughs> I have the exact same thing right there on the floor for $5. So next when it comes to brow gel, the most expensive one that I have is Benefit Gimme Brow. So this retails for $24 and I've definitely mentioned this dupe in previous videos as well. I have to go with the e.l.f. Wow Brow. This is four bucks and it's literally identical to the Benefit. I don't see any difference when I'm using either one of them. They both have the really tiny like micro spoolie that makes it really easy to comb through your brows. They both are tinted with the little fibers that kind of help add a little volume to your brows. And both of them also have a really nice hold, but it doesn't leave your brows stiff or crunchy. So once this wow brow is gone, I definitely will not be repurchasing because four bucks right here and it's like just as good. All right, so moving on to lipstick, I also broke these out into two categories. I have lipsticks and then I have lip gloss. So for lipstick, the most expensive one in my collection are these Charlotte Tilbury Superstar Lips at $34 each. So I do have three different shades and I love, love these. I've talked about them so many times on my channel because they are just a super hydrating lipstick. They're almost like a balm and they have this really thick, like cushiony feel that that almost feels like you're priming your lips. They kind of fill in the lip lines. They make everything look really, really smooth. I always love the way my lips look when I wear these. They're incredible. But $34 is definitely on the expensive side, especially because these come in like these tiny little tubes. So one formula that I've found that is super comparable are the Ulta Beauty Radiant Shine lipsticks. So these are $9 usually. They're actually on sale right now for $4.50. So it's a great time to try them. And while I don't think I have any exact color dupes, I feel like these are more of a formula dupe. They are so similar to the Charlotte Tilbury in that they're like a lipstick lip balm hybrid, but they also have that cushiony sort of primer like feel where they just make your lips look so, so smooth and they offer just a little hint of shine. I think these are just fabulous. I have the two shades. I definitely have been meaning to go get more of them at some point because they're so super nice. I don't always love everything from the Ulta Beauty line. I feel like it's really hit or miss, but I think it was actually one of you guys that told me about these initially and you were like telling me I had to try them and I really agree they are fantastic. So I think sometimes Ulta's brand is a little bit overlooked just because there are some definite duds in that line, but this is not one of them. Highly recommend these. And then when it comes to lip gloss, the most expensive one that I have is from Ilia and this is their Balmy Gloss in the shade Only You. This retails for $26 and I really love this gloss especially because it does have that balmy element to it it just makes it a little bit more hydrating than your typical lip gloss it's also not sticky and doesn't have any kind of scent to it but 26 bucks is kind of steep for a lip gloss especially when there's so many good ones at the drugstore but the formula that I found that is the most comparable I think to the Ilia is the Catrice Powerful 5 liquid lip balm so this kind of has a very similar description it has very similar claims and this one only costs six dollars and I just feel like these 
feel exactly the same on your lips. This one also has no scent to it as well, and it's not sticky, and it just has that same exact smooth feel that the Ilia one has. Now, I know these colors are not the same. The Catrice is in the shade Raspberry Cream, but this is another one that I just feel like it's a really good formula dupe. They behave exactly the same when you put them on your lips. So if you're looking for something like the Ilia Balmy Gloss, I would definitely check out the Catrice Powerful Five. I think these are amazing. I'm sad that they're not at Ulta anymore, so you do have to order them now from the Catrice website, but it's not really that big of a deal. I think it's a great formula. And then last but not least, we have lip liners. So the most expensive lip liner I have in my collection are these ones from Huda Beauty. These are the Lip Contour 2.0, and these retail for $19, which is a little bit steep for a lip liner in my opinion, because there's so many great ones at the drugstore. And I would say the best dupe for these hands down would be again from Koki and this is their retractable lip liners. So these retail for, I believe $6 as well, just like the eyeliners. And these are so creamy. I feel like they're even more creamy than the Huda ones, but they last just as long on your lips. And I wear these all the time just as a lipstick. I just line my lips, fill them in. Sometimes if my lips are particularly dry, I'll put on a lip balm, but I don't always have to. Just like the Huda ones, they're also a twist up formula. And as you can see, I'll just do a quick demo and like draw them on so you can see exactly how creamy they are. I mean, they just hardly take any effort, just like the Koki eyeliners. They're amazing. I'll show you guys all the colors that I have in both. I don't know if I have any dupes necessarily, but I just wanted to show you guys swatches in case you were thinking about purchasing any. I think in this case, not only is the formula a dupe, but I would even go so far as to say I like the Koki ones a little bit better. I feel like the Huda ones maybe are just like slightly more dry. So if you're looking for an amazing lip liner, definitely check out the Koki ones. I'm actually wearing Warm Nude all over today as a lipstick. This is my go-to. This is my favorite one. It's such a pretty one. All right, guys, so those are all the dupes for my most expensive makeup. This was so much fun to make. So again, if you are interested in seeing other creators here on YouTube do this video, definitely let them know. Send them a DM or tag them down below. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and taking the time out of your day to watch it. I appreciate it so, so much. I'd also love to hear from you guys down in the comments below if you've tried any of these products or if you've tried the dupes and what your thoughts are. Thank you all so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you all in my next video. Take care and stay safe. Bye guys.